And in the day's other news, firefighters in Northern California reported new progress against a pair of wildfires threatening about 10,000 homes. They're burning about 100 miles northwest of Sacramento. Meanwhile, the huge car fire near Redding is now 30% contained. It's been burning for a week and has claimed six lives and destroyed more than 880 homes. Iran today all but dismissed President Trump's offer to hold talks with President Hassan Rouhani. Mr. Trump said yesterday he's open to meeting with no preconditions. But the Iranian foreign ministry said reinstating U.S. sanctions is no way to promote dialogue. The head of the hardline Revolutionary Guards went even further, saying Iran is not North Korea to accept your offer for a meeting. There's evidence that North Korea is building more long-range missiles as it talks with the United States about giving up nuclear weapons. The Washington Post reports new satellite images show work at a facility near the capital, Pyongyang. The same facility already produced missiles capable of reaching the United States. In Zimbabwe, the Electoral Commission said it needs more time to announce the results of Monday's vote for president and the parliament. Supporters of opposition leader Nelson Chamisa spent the day celebrating unofficial tallies on social media that appeared to show him winning. They also accused the Electoral Commission of trying to aid Emerson Manangagwa, the current president, by delaying the count. Back in this country, federal immigration officials took heat at a Senate Judiciary Committee on separating migrant families. The policy has now been abandoned, but more than 700 children have yet to be reunited with their parents. Commander Jonathan White of the U.S. Public Health Service Commission Corps said his agency warned against making the Office of Refugee, Refugee Resettlement and others enforce the policy. We raised a number of concerns uh, in the ORR program about uh, any policy which would result in family separation uh, due to uh, concerns we had about the best interest of the child as well as about whether that would be operationally supportable with the bed capacity we had. You told the administration that kids would suffer as a result, that pain would be inflicted, correct? There's no question that separation of children from parents entails significant potential for traumatic psychological injury to the child. The hearing came amid reports of sexual and other abuse at migrant detention facilities going back to 2014. Committee Chairman Chuck Grassley and ranking Democrat Dianne Feinstein have asked for an investigation. The Trump administration is said to be considering a new tax break for the wealthy by cutting taxes on capital gains. It's widely reported today that the proposal involves indexing profits from investments for inflation. That move would lower the taxes paid. The reports say the president might bypass Congress and have the Treasury Department implement the change by rewriting regulations. White House Chief of Staff John Kelly is telling aides that he'll stay through the 2020 presidential election. The Wall Street Journal and others reported today that President Trump asked Kelly to remain and that he agreed. The retired Marine Corps general has been in the post for a year, but rumors have swirled for months that Mr. Trump wanted to replace him. And on Wall Street, the Dow Jones Industrial Average gained 108 points to close at 25,415. The Nasdaq rose more than 41 points, and the S&P 500 added 13. Still to come on the news hour, President Trump's former campaign manager on trial, 3D printed guns, a reality that's also now legal, using lemonade stands to teach kids about finance and much more.